You guys are back to the toilet. Now, back to our show. Neil All right. All right, all right, all right. Got Mike Baker outside the studio. Yes, yes. I saw his new show, uh, America mm-hmm. Declassified, and I, I liked it. Yes. I absolutely liked it. They, they take like um, three stories, right? Yes. There's three every episode? There's three, well, two or three. Because I watched yours, I watched the second one, and I tapped out for the third. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not it's because weird. it sucked. I was just I was just done with it because yeah. I, I was watching the show for you and uh, and I liked it there, Mike Baker. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. You went no. down to uh, Dallas to talk about the JFK thing. We did, um, and it uh, it. Uh, Can I ask you the, yeah. uh, the uh, sorry? Yeah. Um, before you went down to Dallas, what what did you think about the JFK assassination? Ooh. Did you think it was a conspiracy? Before you, you know, did like, your own research, uh, he's, he's, he knows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he we, was we working we inside. The file. You know, <laughs> the file, the outfit, he has the other so angles. <laughs> I mean, honestly, a new yeah. medium called video. <laughs> yeah. Of it's, course, uh, yeah, see it know, all. When you go into training, yeah, that's yeah. actually the thing that people don't know. The first first week, yeah, y- 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 they tell you all these things, <laughs> right? And Just to they keep you in line, right? And um, so I think that's like an old uh, Bill Hicks bit or yeah, something, yeah. <laughs> where they show you the basement of the White House, the new president. Yeah, they bring him down. I didn't have. I didn't have a real uh, uh, point of view one way or the other uh, beforehand. I mean, I, I I felt as if uh, with the conspiracy, I understood why people wanted to think that there was something there mm. and or believed, uh, b- still believe that there's something there. And the show itself, uh, America Declassified on Sundays on Travel Channel at 10 Whoa. p.m. Nice. See how I do that now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I took a week's work of training for that. <laughs> and um, but I understand why, you know, why there is this this desire to have something bigger than just one lone, you know, psychotic out there with a rifle. And so what we try to do with the show during the episodes when we're talking about a mystery or a conspiracy is to try to peel back the layers Mm -hmm. and then let the viewers uh, make a decision. We're not trying to just say, this is it. This is the answer because it would be asinine, right? You you got got 20 minutes for a story perhaps, and we're not going to, we're not going to solve everything, but we take aspects of the mystery aspects of the conspiracy. Uh, We take the viewers behind the scenes at at restricted or top secret facilities Mm -hmm. where we get access. Jesse Ventura did that. Yeah, did oh, he? Boy. Oh, yeah, we, boy, did he. It was well, a little different, though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a name I haven't heard in, in ages. I don't Jesse see, Ventura. You know, in ages, he's popping up again. I don't you know, see Mike Baker out there at fucking, you know, Roswell right. talking about UFOs. Oh, geez. No, I can guarantee the viewers yeah. that there will be no alien stories. No alien. There's no alien yeah. stories. As much as, as the, the viewers may want them, yeah, yeah, we're staying yeah. away from them. Yeah. Um, Jesse Ventura. Yeah. I think the whole conspiracy thing, I think people love conspiracies because uh, they feel feel powerless without them if, if you think of um the kennedy assassination 9 11 things like that if it, you just take it at face value we're very vulnerable right is a president that vulnerable where a lone gunman can can uh, you know screw up the course of the, of the country well back then um, sure yeah right not anymore because now we look at our president and he's very very protected it's unbelievable yeah there's there's, there's layers you just don't even then. see yeah I mean, but you you see history, history has taught us one and, thing right <laughs> uh, so let's get into the jfk thing sure uh talk about that episode and and, yeah. and what you did well it was Fantastic. We, we went down. Uh, we got the uh, the uh, permission from the authorities. We didn't just spring on them and surprise it. Um, and you didn't get um, a lot of permission. We didn't get a huge amount of that. I'll tell you why. Mike, I'll tell you why. Why is that? Because you couldn't stop the traffic. Well, well, no, we did stop I, traffic. We did stop traffic. We didn't stop pedestrian There's traffic. one shot where yeah, I'm huh? like, he's going to get hit by a car. Oh, that one. Yeah, that was okay. Okay. Was, fair enough. All right. So you didn't enough. get a lot of yeah, clearance. We didn't lock the city you, down. Yeah, you yeah, couldn't yeah, get yeah, a couple yeah. cops to go, look, they're filming something for the Travel Channel. Mike Baker, XCIA is on the X. They have the famous X down there where, you know, you can stand on, and that's where JFK got his head fucking blown oh, blown yeah. off yeah. and you're doing a little quick look i'm just proving that i saw the show yeah and you're doing a little thing on the x and i see the cars coming and i'm like this is the travel channel they should have been able to stop the traffic yeah. for you and the funny thing was they kept saying okay well go back at that let's do it one more time but but try it try it from this perspective and and so we'd wait for the light to change i'm thinking well, yeah, okay it's very high end and yeah, you can yeah. see all that you can see all the guys up at the, at the traffic light thinking i'm gonna i'm gonna hit this motherfucker <laughs> and, and, and to them it's just another traffic light they, they live in yeah, that yeah. town they don't give yeah. a fuck about the no. jfk 
assassination. They just want to get home. So when that light turns green, because me and Jimmy witnessed this, yeah. it, it they start flying down that sort of, it's kind of a hill. Right. A little right. bit of a hill well, right everybody's there. Everybody's worried they're going to get popped if they can't, you know, and, so they speed through. Well, yeah, no, they yeah. don't want history to repeat itself. <laughs> right. And we, yeah. we saw, uh, I forgot what, if it was a lady. A woman almost it was hit. a woman, oh, right? Geez. We saw a woman almost yeah. get fucking crushed because they people assume well that's where jfk got you know shot it's an x i'm a tourist of course i could just go out right. there and get a picture right. they don't even notice that cars are coming invincibility if it's I go a right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. public road yeah. Well, we saw yeah. a lady almost get fuck it yeah. i mean it was close well, it's, man. Three, it's three lanes of traffic they're moving like you said they by the time they hit that that little they're flying. slope yeah they're flying so anyway we, so you we went down anyway, there so we went down there and and if anybody hasn't been uh down to dealey plaza or hasn't been the it. Book Depository Museum, they should go because it's, it's a fantastic experience. But so we wh what we were looking at was kind of walking back through Lee Harvey Oswald's story, but at the same time, looking at the conspiracy from a couple of different perspectives. And, and one uh, witness in particular was uh, quite compelling, a guy named Lee Bowers, who worked at the, the train station. At the, the, he was a station master up in the switching tower that is actually behind the grassy knoll. And his mm -hmm. testimony was about the second gunman, about seeing a muzzle flash, seeing something uh, behind the picket fence that looks down over the grassy knoll onto the, onto the road. And so we, we ran some forensic testing on that, just, just basic things, to see whether Lee Bowers could have been credible. Could he have seen what he thought he saw or mm -hmm. what he claimed he saw? Looking at his death, he died. Uh, wait, as, wait, wait! As before others. you move yeah. on to that, sorry, yeah. you're downplaying it, but you got access to that tower. We and, did, and, and we you're did. one of the first uh, media people to ever do that, right? Right, right. And thank you for calling me a media person. Uh, <laughs> my, media people. My life is now complete. <laughs> um, and uh, so we, but we did. We got access to the switching tower. How did you get access? There. You know what? We uh, we told them we were the federal authorities. <laughs> no, we we're doing no, an investigation. No, uh, no, you know, Travel Channel worked very hard, and, and the production company indigo right. films that, that worked with them on this they worked very hard at all of these various stories and it, and it was really impressive what they were able to do in the places we were able to go hmm. and i mean we went down to, to the country's only underground burial vault for radioactive waste uh, we went down to the white sands uh, missile range out to ground zero in the mercury town i mean we went to went to places that were really fantastic and they they really worked their ass off to get uh, access for this because again mm -hmm. the idea let's let's take the viewers someplace where they couldn't normally go on their own or someplace that's got a mystery or a conspiracy yeah, around give them some information and, and let, them, uh, some information. Yeah. let them mix that in what they know already and see what they uh, come up with right, right. informative yeah. entertaining yeah mm -hmm. there you go but so you're in the yeah. switching tower. scene in the switching tower we ran some <laughs> tests we had a, we had a we had a shooter at the picket fence uh firing off several rounds the first time uh that's happened in 50 years since the assassination and uh, we did stop traffic for for the uh, for the tests there, mm -hmm. and if you want to get an interesting result, go down to Dealey Plaza, where because we couldn't stop the pedestrians from wandering about, and fire a <laughs> rifle. Oh shit! In Dealey Plaza, uh, it was yeah, it was it was highly interesting. Did um, people uh, kind of jump a little yeah, bit, get yeah, a little was, jumpy? Yeah, there was a, a busload of Japanese tourists, and oh, you know, they, they were all. They, I mean, they, and they were loving it afterwards. They I couldn't bet. they couldn't believe what they were seeing. But we so we fired off several rounds from there, and then I, I had a chance to do the same. Uh, try to in just in terms of determining the the, the nature of the shot, mm -hmm. and you know how difficult would it have been for a second shooter uh, from behind that position to, to to get this thing done, and then and then what are they going to do? How do they get off the X? And and mm. and then we went up and we looked. We they gave us terrific access up in the book depository um, in terms of getting to the the actual vantage point for Lee Harvey Oswald. That's glassed off. They let you behind the glass. Wait, they didn't put us behind the glass. They let us to a to a, a, a no access area right above it. Okay. So we had we were one floor above the sixth floor, but we were at the window, and they didn't, right, so right. They, they allowed us to go up there, which and and, and uh, it was it was very interesting. Um, they wouldn't allow us to uh, to take a shot from there. I think they felt that might have been too insensitive. A little, yeah. a little much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stretching a little bit too far. But it was. What was your opinion um, looking out that window? Feasible. Yeah, it, it's yeah. 175 feet. Right? Uh -huh. It's 175 feet. Which isn't uh, that far of a shot, really. It's not that far. The, yeah. the digital analysis or forensics work on the Zapruder film, has, you know, it looks at about 8.2 8, 8 seconds or so uh, for getting three shots off with a, with a, a bolt-action mm -hmm. rifle. People say, well, it was Lee Harvey Oswald. He was a mook. He, he had no training. Well, he was, he, he, he was in the military, mm -hmm. and he did get his marksman. 
uh, badge, his credentials. He was a sharpshooter first, I think. He tested marksman before he left the military, but right. he did test sharpshooter right. earlier than that. Yeah, and then he, and then you know, and then if you don't keep practicing, which you know a lot of guys don't, then they test and they get a lower lower uh, 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 certification. But you know, it's not like he, he got the headshot first round off either. No, and, and, you know, and it's, it's not like, like uh, if you've got training, if you've got some level of training. You've got no wind or weather conditions. You've got a target that's moving maybe five miles an hour, mm-hmm. dead on line with you. You've right. already wrecked. The, he worked at the book depository. And so he had a chance. He knew exactly where he wanted to be. He knew exactly what that shot was going to look like. And, and so mm. in terms of just from an operational point of view, could he have done it? Well, yes. I don't, yeah. I don't think there's any but, doubt he could have done it. But what I don't yeah. understand, why, why, uh, not, why take the shot after the turn? Because to, to take it the other way, the, yeah. the Secret Service would be looking up at you. If is you that what, it, if is you that what it, they're thinking? Yeah. Why else? If you took You're it head hanging on. hanging out the window, right. Yeah, you took right. it head on. Every agent is looking right. in your direction. Every cop's looking in your direction. Think of it, as, it, as he makes that turn, so the focus is all heading down now. Sure. Uh-huh. And so and then as then he makes that turn, and, and, and now he's also right focus line. somewhere else. I, got, right, I, I right. understand. So he had, a, he had a very good line of sight. Now, does that mean that it... it it knocks out the conspiracy theory and all those other angles. And, and, and was he acting? And this is a very interesting point. Was he acting on his own? Or, you know, I think he was the trigger guy. I, mm-hmm. think, he, I think he was the shooter. But w- were there other factors at play? Right, right. You know, so we, we, but we look at Lee Bowers. We look at how he died uh, as a witness in a very mysterious fashion. Um, and, you know, was Belzer's it, on there. Died? Richard Belzer's on there talking about the conspiracy theory. He's very interesting. <laughs> The bells, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the and, bells. Uh, so it was, it's good. But we, uh, he died in a car crash on mm. on a on a mm. two lane country road uh, by himself uh, when he went off the road and you know crashed. That into sounds a small like bridge. it's written for a movie. But right is that there, that odd right? though? When you because I've heard about all these dead. I knew I I, remember, I thought I remember it was a car crash. It's like it's a single car crash. They happen all the time. Mm-hmm. If, you know, because he was tied to the Kennedy assassination. It sounds ominous, mm-hmm. but single car crashes happen all the time. Exactly. And then his body was cremated reason. that evening. All the more reason to do yeah, it that way, so people could go. Guy, it happens all the time. Yeah. This was a great point you guys yeah. made. And and this, and they, they, they used to. They didn't cremate like they do today. No, it, no, was, it, it was a lot rarer to cremate a body back in '63. Yeah, and 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 he was cremated, cremated that night, uh, according to the reports. Wow, which which is a little unusual. His family was. I, I, who knows what what that was all about? But the problem is that you know so many of these these folks have have passed away, mm-hmm. um, and you know. To, to a well, lot it's of been the, 50 years. It's been 50 years, exactly. A lot of <laughs> the people... A lot, exactly. So, <laughs> it has, so I think that's mysterious. <laughs> right. 50 uh, years uh, and they're still uh, not uh, as young uh, as they used but to Mike, be. But Mike, let me ask you, yeah. of, the, of all this stuff, what is it that made you think... Because it, uh, believe me, if it, it's hard to swallow the, the, the single gunman theory. But that's what I've come to believe again because I just... No other theory, no conspiracy theory held water. None of them. Mm-hmm. Like the other uh, whole, uh, well, the guy was in the, and then they, and they shut up all the witness. It's just, it, it's so illogical. Well, that they what, would use this asshole Oswald, who was an asshole, who had already fired at another public official. <laughs> this is the yeah. last dumb motherfucker you'd use for this. It's very dysfunctional. <laughs> you know, he had a failed uh, experience trying to start a new life in Russia. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, so, so you're absolutely right. And that's what I, I always kind of lean towards uh, uh, with uh, some of these stories. Like we did, uh, we did an episode on Martin Luther King, and we were down in Memphis. Again, sort of great access. Was up on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel outside his door with the Reverend Kyles, who was with him when he was shot. He and Ralph Abernathy were in there, and they all started to come out. And mm-hmm. Dr. King stopped, leaned over the, the railing to talk to Jesse Jackson and Andrew Young and a couple others down there, and then he got popped. And so we did, again, same thing. We were running some forensic tests. We talked to a lot of people. Very interesting. And the same idea. People didn't mm-hmm. want to think that it was just James Earl Ray, you know, shooting out of a second story bathroom window in a rooming house across the street. They wanted to think it was something different. But when you look at that, the conspiracy, to Jim, Jim's point, you think, really? So, you, you know, because conspiracy theorists in that story, you know, they're thinking it's Hoover. It was the yeah, Memphis yeah. PD. It was the mob and it was military. Mm-hmm. All of them working together. And at the end of it all, they decide on James Earl Ray, you know, as the, as the guy who's going to be the fall <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah. And then they let him go. And he escapes to London for two months and gets picked up. So, so a lot of the conspiracy theories are, are, are mm. you, can, you can set aside. But some of them do linger. Some of them are, are, are it, it just you get the feeling they're always going to be unsettled. What's you know, a lingering one in JFK or a lingering aspect of it? Well, people, uh, same thing. People don't want to believe that it was Lee Harvey Oswald. And I think, I think what you said was actually right. I think that they uh, was actually right. I think you said something that was actually uh, right. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> Mike. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. golly uh, gee. Uh, you know. Um, Gosh. Yeah, I know. How, yeah how, how, how stupid was that statement? But I think uh, what 
when they when they look at JFK, you think about the time frame, and we weren't used to seeing stories every other day about some nut job, you know, mm-hmm. with, a, with a rifle going into a school or wherever and shooting it up. And it just, you know, news traveled slower. Uh, people's right. expectations were, were different. And at, certainly at that time, the idea that it was just one man who impacted the nation so much uh, it was very hard to, to, yeah, to believe. Yeah. And it fueled this this idea that there was something else. And the longer it stays out there, I think, the longer it, it lingers, you know, it, it's it's harder to get rid of. Right. But what is a part of it that you think made you think it might be a conspiracy? Well, there was uh, another witness you had in the stairwell. Mm, yeah, there was there was a witness we, that, that uh, never that came forward down, before was never interviewed. There were a lot of huh. people that weren't interviewed, which is interesting, but not again, not. Completely atypical in investigations. I mean, things get missed. Mm-hmm. You know, interviews don't happen. Um, and but she was there in a position where if uh, Lee Harvey had come running down that stairwell, um, given her position and she was credible in terms of checking her out, uh, she would have seen something. She would have seen mm-hmm. him. But but what what instead was, you know, no, I didn't see anybody coming down the stairwell. And she was clear as a bell. She was, you know, she was she was a, a sharp individual. Um, I'm not saying again. I don't say that refutes the fact that he was right. the gunman. It, it, what's the most compelling part of the JFK conspiracy? I mean, for me, I'd spent so much time behind a curtain, really, at the outfit that um, I'm not a conspiracy guy by nature. Mm. And so, you know, I, I I went into it, you know, with an open mind because. But I didn't, I, you know, I, I'm not a skeptical person by nature. I, just, I tend to think that sometimes things are just as simple as they seem. Right, right. You know. but when yeah. you, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Well, you say about like the one who didn't see him come down the steps. I saw an interview recently with a kid, a young black guy. He was probably 16 when it happened. And they re-interviewed him now in his adult life many, many years later, who saw Oswald poke out the window or somebody with a rifle mm-hmm. poke out that mm-hmm. window. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a photographer. And I want to say he's the one that, that won the Pulitzer for snapping the Jack Ruby, that death mm-hmm. photo of mm-hmm. Oswald. Mm-hmm. And his great regret was that he didn't snap the photo when he saw the guy with the gun. And he's the day before saw somebody with a rifle leaning out that window the or in that before, window. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 the assassination. I'm sorry. Right. At the uh, and uh, he said he, he, one of his great regrets was not snapping that fucking Why photo. Why I think yeah. you got, <laughs> Secret Service. I think you got one good picture there, fella. But that was like his redemption. Don't worry about it. Because they didn't think in the moment. You know, you saw all these yeah, cops true. and stuff around. It was. But a if different you're a photographer, time. don't you just kind of shoot everything around you? Oh, maybe. Yeah, but he, yeah. maybe he missed the shot. Maybe he maybe he yeah. saw it and mm-hmm. missed it. Yeah. Huh. Well, that could be. That that could also be. Um, you know, Secret Service, because Secret Service are wrecking the, you know, sites like that all the time. And so it could well have been somebody. Uh, it was who something was you don't see the, every yeah. day, whether it's Secret Service right. or, you know, Oswald, you're going to take the picture, I right. think. Yeah, maybe he tried to and missed it. Yeah. yeah. But, but every, every episode we're doing something um, that I think, I, I hope, the viewer is going to find, you know, really interesting. And we're, and we're trying to, to approach it from the point of view that, that they want something more out there. They want, they want some information. They want, obviously, everybody wants to be entertained. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, not every show can be, you know, too dames fighting over a wedding dress. You know, so <laughs> people are yeah. fascinated by uh, that whole thing, though. You know, conspiracies and yeah. uh, what happened. Well, they want more information. What else uh, are you working on for the? We did. Uh, uh, we did a variety of things. We did the Escape from Alcatraz, the '62. Nice. Oh right, yeah, yeah that's real, that's cool. What do you with that? I've been to Alcatraz. Yeah, yeah fascinating place, and it? it's it's fantastic. I love Alcatraz. They gave us access. It was unbelievable. At, at, uh, we where did you there. get to see that the average tourist doesn't? Right, and we were there at no, night time. Oh, oh, what would well, because well, some they, of those tunnels that they have the ropes across. I'm like, oh yeah. man, I, I wish I knew someone here so they could take me on a tour. <laughs> we didn't start working. We didn't really start filming each day until after everybody had left. The tourists right. had left, and so we were there basically through the night. Wow. And yeah. that's an interesting experience walking around and they literally just let us, you know, so I, I wandered all over that place and at nighttime. It's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty fucked up place. It's got to be <laughs> pretty <laughs> creepy, yeah. right? Yeah, but, but it's they, pretty uh, cool. We have went in have behind, you ever been in? Uh, no, nah, never oh, been there. It's, it's, it's awesome. Again, same it thing. People should be going to these places. And I say yeah. that over and over during these, these, these shows. I said, if you haven't been here, you got to come take a look at this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a, we, there's so many places around this country to see. But Alcatraz, we, we, we looked at Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers. Not, How about Charlie Butts? Yeah. Remember Charlie yeah. Butts? Yeah. Yeah. Charlie <laughs> Butts. <laughs> 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 now we got to go back and do a whole new story. Yeah. Uh, so, so Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, uh, they 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 went on about a, a year long effort to to get themselves out of Alcatraz, and it was an incredible effort. And they basically they they discovered that the walls were crumbling because of age and and, and the conditions, the weather conditions, mm. and the type of concrete, and 
So every night they would kind of use a spoon or whatever they had. Uh, Frank Morris made it like a little makeshift electric drill out of a, out of a motor he took out of a vacuum. And they would, they would drill and drill and drill and drill through this concrete until they'd made spaces. And when you look at these spaces and think what they did, they crawled <laughs> behind it. And what they'd found was from other inmates who were being you know, put to work by the guards to do plumbing, they'd found that there was a three-foot crawl space behind their cells in between the cell blocks. And so if they could get through the back uh, wall of their cell, these saw, cells are tiny, they'd get into this crawl space. And then they found over the course of a year, they crawl up these pipes, they get to the top of the cell block, and they figured out a way to get onto the roof to get Jeez. through. They had, to, they had to cut through rebar, and they tried a variety of things to get through the rebar in this concrete. And what they finally settled on was they would take dental floss from the, the, uh, the dental shop, and then they would take uh, contact cement from the shoe shop. They all they all had to work. It's Amazing. not like today. The These guys all had to work. Right, right. And yeah. They had to, they had to take contact, and they would cover the dental floss in in, in uh, contact cement, and then they cover it with silica that they got from the dental shop, and they would let it harden, and then they would use it like a, a you know a, a, like a saw, a like a little band saw. Type of, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, and they wow. would just day after day, How night after night. How long did that you know, take? It Holy took, shit! It, it took it took a, about a year. And, and they could only work at night after lights off. And, and most of the prisoners so they were, were in really on it. tired. Right. Well, most of yeah. the prisoners were in on because it because they would because you had to make noise. And so every yeah. time they, they would, you know, prisoners would start making noise or banging pots or whatever. And they, I mean, some of the things that these guys did were really Shh. impressive in terms of just trying to get yourself out of there. Now they had some time on their hands, right? So, yeah, yeah, true. Where you know, are they going? Are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then they did, but they didn't know really much at all about the tides, the ebb, the current, in, in the bay. Um, but then they made a, a raft out of raincoats issued from the from the uh, prison and using contact cement. And then they made some homemade paddles out of some wood that they stole from pallets. And one night they took off in November 62. Uh, huh. And that was the last anybody heard from them. So and so yeah. we did the same thing. We recreated the raft out of the same crappy material, made some wooden paddles and uh, tried to Did the rats hold up in the water? Fucking, no. No, it was like, you know what it was like? It was like trying to paddle a hot tub. It filled up with water. <laughs> and so, and we're out there in the middle of the bay for hours, right? And and, and just not going anywhere. And, uh, well, we, we are going somewhere. We're going out to sea. Oh, and, man. Uh, the the yeah. currents are that rough? Currents are awful. And if you don't get it right, you're screwed. And so, you know, there, there were a lot of odds stacked against these guys. Um, huh. But, you know, just the sheer will of trying to do this and get the hell out. And then, but then you got to think once they finally got out and over the wall and down the rock and down to the water, and then they're, you know, these three guys, you know, they were just, you know, they weren't, weren't pleasant guys, but now they're looking at the bay thinking, so they had to get in the water in, in the middle of the night in November Oof. and, and try this. Uh, I, it, 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 it's a fascinating thing. We ended up swimming because the paddling just wasn't going to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. so how far was wow. it from, uh, I know they thought they went to Angel Island. Right. How far was the, uh. From Alcatraz to the mainland was a mile, or not quite a mile. It's not, not that it's, far. It's not that far. It's it's about a it's it's about a mile. But it's their their concern was apparently, according to talk to some of the, uh, what they gathered information from the prisoners, was their concern over being discovered as soon as they you know set set foot on on, on ground. Uh -huh. and so because it was and you could sit in Alcatraz in those days and in the cells and you could hear the noise of people in the bars mm -hmm. and having fun and, and you know, traffic. The club. Right. And so, you know, wow, that's, that's torturous. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that drove them nuts, they said, was hearing the, the women having a good time at the yacht club. Right. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, but Whitey Bulger and, and was there at the time um, and huh. he's been in the news recently and, oh, and yeah. uh, Al Capone, of course, and, and 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 but we had a chance to talk. We talked to a guy named Patrick Mahoney. Oh, Whitey Bulger was in that? I Whitey didn't Bulger oh, was okay. there when they broke out. And, uh, but Patrick Mahoney was a guard that night. Um, and a fantastic guy, huge guy, hands like, you know, uh, hams. Like and, yeah, and, and <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. So, well, that's, that's the second season. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's Patrick Mahoney de declassified. Uh, Big cocks across America. <laughs> so, uh, shit. Well, you gotta, you gotta keep moving forward. <laughs> you? Of course, you know? yeah, yeah. But, uh, Patrick Mahoney was there and, and he talks about it and he talks about, uh, he's just he's just a big guy, and he just and he just and you can see it still burns in him. You know the the idea that these guys got away, yeah. whether they lived or not, it just pisses them out. out. Yeah, yeah, whatever. They, whatever. whatever. Out. they did yeah. get out. Yeah. Did they ever find anything in the movie? They find a little bit of the you know flower, which is nonsense. Um, but what did they ever find any trace of the raft or anything? They didn't. No, not the raft. They found uh, personal effects, and they found mm -hmm. a paddle. Uh, they found person because these guys had. You know, they had taken different time, right? You think about prisoners now escaping, but these guys had actually fashioned out of that same uh, raincoat material. They fashioned a couple of little envelopes or something, and they'd put some letters in there and things that they wanted to hold on to. <laughs> you know, yeah, what like, the fuck? Letters from mom, you know. Yeah, in case yeah, they, yeah. They, you know, and so they, uh, you Where know, they found they found? some of that it floating in the bay. 
uh, mm. because they went they went out uh, and then the morning call when they they went to rouse the prisoners up. Um, you know, they'd go along the line and, you know, and, 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 uh, one of the, one of the, I think it was Frank Morris didn't, didn't, uh, get up. That was the first one they noticed. And so one of the guards walked up to the, to the bars, you know, and said to the bars and, and, you know, which I guess is what they would say. And, Cause I just said it. <laughs> and, uh, and so he didn't move. And so he kind of, you know, went in there and jabbed him. And that's when his paper mache head fell on the floor. Yeah. They and actually Patrick Mahoney their... said that, that guard screamed like a girl. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That would scare the shit yeah. out of you. Yeah, exactly. What was the common belief by the warden and the guards? I mean, do they really think that they got, we all like to believe it. They probably drowned. And I hate to say that mm. because no, yeah. no one ever heard of any of them. Even tell me two brothers and a Frank Morris just went through the next 50 years up disappeared. Right. Without being heard from, yeah, I mean, yeah. or getting rearrested for anything or pulled over driving or, you know, yeah. Right. yeah. No, it's it, most of the guards think they died. And, and, out, and a lot Cooper. of people think they died. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, you know, I, I think the odds are hugely stacked against them. And, and, and I, I agree with it. The fact that nobody talked, you're going to tell me, and then, look, at no, people can't keep their yap shut right? yeah, over yeah. a period of time. And that's, you know, to, to, to your point again with JFK, you know, you think that somebody's not going to talk in a vast conspiracy. And what did they do point. for a living? They, they didn't commit any more crimes. They right. didn't, you know, in all those years, you would assume something. Unless they went happened. to Canada. And back then it was easier to lose yourself and change your identity because you weren't tracked electronically. So that's possible. They could have went to Canada, given different names and, and lived. Or maybe one of them found a way to get on a plane and went to London. You know, who knows? But I doubt yeah. it. Right. right. It's, it, would be, it would be very difficult. Um, but it's it was a fascinating thing, and, and I tell you what, that what water is that, that water's sorry. cold. Sixty one or sixty two? Okay, 60, the end of sixty two, and uh, that mm -hmm. water's very cold, uh -huh. uh, and uh, it's teeming with wildlife. I uh, didn't see any sharks, but um, there's there's, uh, there's a lot of activity in the bay, huh. and it's uh, it's fantastic. I, I, you know, one of the biggest threats was we, they were working on the World Cup or the World Cup, the uh, what do they call it, America's Cup. All right, and yeah. so um, you know the boats were out there practicing. It was before it started, and you know these things are moving like rocket ships. They don't look like sailing boats anymore. No, right? of course not. Yeah, and spaceships yeah. with a sail, right? right. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and barely a sail. It's this yeah. old fin, and so this thing was an Emirates boat was out there rocketing around at thirty five or forty, and and you know we're out there in this. With some stupid, <laughs> shitty fucking raincoat. <laughs> Ra 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 we're heading out to sea, boys. And, and, uh, and I have two great guys with me. Both are, are professional swimmers who, who, you know, have swum the bay a lot. Uh -huh. And uh, and and you know they 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 signed on because they thought yeah anybody's stupid enough to try this let's give it a go <laughs> but they were you can see even halfway through they were completely frustrated with these paddles and they just wanted to get in the water and swim and you know? swim for and it I said yeah. no I think we got to keep paddling anyway. I have heard the theory that it would, they were helped by someone in a boat uh, who met them in the thing whether it, the guy English played by Paul Benjamin in the movie I forget mm -hmm. what his I don't know what his real name was but that the, the black guy that, that he might have had somebody. Meet them, and that if that happened, that's the only shot I think they right. had. If somebody actually met them, you know, right. uh, on, on some prearranged night, or maybe right. one of many nights they were out there waiting for them. Yeah, all, all bets are off if that if that if they actually were smart enough and capable enough to, to get that done. Uh, yeah. But we talked to the U.S. Marshal, uh, who is still on the case. It's an active case. It's an open case. That's amazing. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so it's 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 a great story, but there's a lot of these just like that in this show, America Declassified on Travel Channel what, on Sundays what, at 10 p.m. It's an open Sounds case, great, man. It's an open case, but what is he doing 50 years later? Like, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Yeah. what lead is he no. <laughs> tracking down? You yeah. see him on the coast just <laughs> kicking with his foot yeah. looking for something. He does, yeah. the, he does this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Puts his <laughs> hand over his, yeah, right. to yeah. his forehead and looks. squints and looks. Squints into the sun to look up and down Fisherman's Wharf with pictures yeah. of the guy saying, have you seen him? Seen have this seen guy? Him? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine him a little bit older now. Have he, you seen him? <laughs> he just interviewed a new witness and he realized it was one of the actors from Escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> right. cool. yes, I interviewed <laughs> Officer Zimmerman uh, who was there when the man chopped his fingers off. <laughs> Doc. Uh, Alcatraz is an amazing place. It's, it's fantastic. It's, and then it's just, just a the furry history. ride out to it is cool. You know? yeah. It is. The whole part. And you know what? There was, hmm. a, there was, a, there was a, a community out there. The guards oh, no. lived out there with their families. Oh, with their families, and, their and they went to school and they everything. Went to school, Patrick Mahoney's uh, his kids were were born out there. Their birth certificates say Alcatraz, <laughs> say you know amazing. federal penitentiary. And look how close so, it is. You don't realize how close it really yeah, was. That's uh, to San Francisco. That's a long swim in a November cold, though. Yeah, it is, yeah. but if you're swimming for your life, you can probably motivate. Because Frank Morris was at least the way they painted him in the film, an extraordinarily bright guy. And for guys to be this smart for a year. And then just be so dumb they don't realize the water's going to be cold doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. Mm. Right. right. Well, I mean, and, and you're right about that sort of that will to live. And if you had nothing else going for you, you're and, swimming for your but life. But at a certain point, 
at a, a certain point, the uh, you know the odds just. You it's know, an amazing plan and execution of it the is, plan yeah. right up until you got to get in that fucking water. Right. Then it becomes a crapshoot. You know, right. the rest of it, they did a, an amazing job of right. distracting the guards and thinking they were in there with the fake heads and figuring out how to get through that wall, up the pipes, get through the bars, like all that shit. Right. And then it's like, great. We got a current that'll pull you right out to sea, freezing cold water. I mean, obviously... They're they're not swimmers. They're no. criminals. Yeah, they've been they've been eating prison food and smoking and yeah, you know, yeah. they're, they're not in great shape. But so, but again, you, you can't you can't underestimate sort of that that mm. will that desire yeah. that when you know you got nothing else going, mm. you know. And, but again, it's sort of like that. Okay, that takes you so far. But then the reality right, will right. kick in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we did, there's a lot of these things. We did the DB Cooper. You know, America's oh, yeah, okay. hijacking. Nice. Fantastic. That's an amazing know. story too. Yeah. What yeah. do you think about that? I, I, obviously, he's probably dead. But I mean, they found his money under silt or whatever half of it or whatever, yeah. five thousand yeah. bucks yeah. what do you think um you know what that's that's one where um i i fall back on the same thing we talked about before to think that this guy would go out the back of a commercial jet uh in a business suit in loafers he didn't he, so he landed without his shoes there's no way going out there doing that jump <laughs> they're gonna stay on, shoes yeah. on so he landed in the middle of the snoqualmie forest which is a vast wilderness up in northwest america in washington state and the idea that he's going to Survive the jump, first of all, uh, and then get himself out of that forest mm. uh, and is is uh, it's very hard to believe. Yeah, but he could be yeah. living with Bigfoot. Well, it could be. Exactly. And people say, well, you know, I, I mean, we never saw him. We never spotted him. But when you stop around and we did for a long time, when you stop around in that forest. Uh, you realize what it's like for search and rescue. You realize uh -huh. you almost have to step on the individual. And he was he was he was jumping out with a military grade shoot, you know, Odie Green, and so that thing up there hung up in the in the trees for all these years. People aren't just you're just not going to spot right. it. Didn't but, he, by the way, uh, take mm. the least of the, like he took? He, they, they said if he really knew what he was doing, he would have taken the other shoot. Mm. There was a couple of shoot options they gave him, and he right. didn't take the one that he right. probably was better for him to right. take. Which was fascinating because it's all it's almost like they were just. I mean, who does this? But they gave him two hundred thousand dollars, and they gave him you know uh shoot options he turned it back and said no i want he, but his choice could be interpreted a couple of different ways it could be interpreted that he he did have some knowledge oh, I, don't, okay. I don't think he had any experience but he had some knowledge of, of what was going on but still same thing going out the back of that plane landing and then trying to make your way out if you get hung up in one of those fur trees which i ended up having to do uh -huh. uh, and then trying to make your way out of your shoot out of your harness and figuring out how to, you know, what are you going to do? How, you know, how get to down, get down? Right? And then, uh, and then get the hell out. And it's a, uh, it's a tough old place. And, and the news came out quick. So the next day, the place, you know, it's vast, but uh, there were a lot of people all out there hunting for two hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah. All the townspeople came from the surrounding, uh, you know, towns, and 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 uh, they were out there stomping around, and mm. nobody ever found. And there are people who have been following this case for for ever since, you know, for years, yeah, and years, yeah. And years. And I just think it, it's it's hard to imagine. Uh, they they did find some money about eight nine miles down the watershed, uh, but it's a it's a tough one. But I tell you what, we we uh, recreated the jump. Uh, a, a good buddy of mine. Um, up in uh, Washington State, runs a great uh, jump center, Kapowson Jump Center, mm. and uh, uh, they uh, they did a great job. So it's you know there's there's all these things going on. I, I think if if uh, if the viewers give it a chance, I think they'll really enjoy it, and and we're really doing everything we can to sort of drive eyeballs to the screen. Yeah, yeah. Very I like cool. that. Yeah, I learned it that. Sounds yeah. like a blast. It's called America man, Declassified, airing on uh, Sundays on the mm -hmm. Travel Channel, 10, 10 p.m. Yeah, and and every viewer gets a free. Kitchen appliance, uh, personally <laughs> delivered by Jim and I. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. He look at that. that. But yeah, it's I'll a new do, plan. I'll do the funny spatula scene from Stripes on your hiney. <laughs> Remember when I did the, I did the spatula with PJ Souls? You I'll do like that on your that, hiney. You? That stunk. That scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we should take a break. Yeah, we'll uh, take a break. You can Mike, hang out, uh, Mike. Sir, amazing. Mike. Thank you very much. Might be doing some October next or something, but. Yeah, if you hang nice. out for this next segment, we will officially alienate you from every other radio show. Exactly, <laughs> that's true. So Actually, what well, well, thank you very much because I, 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 you know, I, I, it's it's something new. You know, I, I love coming in here and talking about whatever the hell's going on in the world. Uh, but but this, you're this, a TV this star. is different. You know, Plugging have, something is a different a, feeling. A, a, but, you know. a project going on. This yeah. is. Uh, yeah. It sounds uh, really entertaining. Yeah. Take yeah. Out, Very gonna, interesting. You're going to take out Duck Dynasty. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be great? Early you're take him out. You're yeah. going to be the one. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be me, Honey Boo Boo, and Duck Boo -Boo. Dynasty. Boo -Boo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this newfound success. I know, right? Look at that. We want to see Mike again. Yeah. No, I'm going to stay just as as much of a douchebag as I'm always. Very good. Then you fit in perfectly here.
<laughs> Mike, thanks so much Thank uh, you. for coming in. Thank you. The Opie and Anthony Show on Sirius XM. All right. Well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony Show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony Show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.